Hi everyone, in this video I will show you how to create real-time flames. This is another real-time VFX tutorial based on the latest teaser for my upcoming animation course Alive that I have published a few weeks ago. But before we jump into this, I'd like to thank you for the 30,000 subscribers on YouTube I've just reached. That means a lot. To celebrate this, I'm running a special sales using the code P2Design. You will have 30% off on any of my products. So if you want to learn rigging in Blender or character creation, don't miss this. Let's get started with the tutorial. We will start with our default Blender scene and remove everything and add a simple plane. In edit mode, I will rotate it by 90 degrees on its X axis and offset it on the Z axis. I will then pull a bit the upper vertices to give it a more rectangular shape. This is something you can do later. As usual, when adding a simple plane, it's already unwrapped. And as explained in my previous video, the coordinate on the X and Y axis run from 0 to 1 in the UV space. I have opened the shader editor and I will create a new material called Flames. Using the render engine EV, I will activate the ambient occlusion and the bloom. Since we want to use transparency, we need to specify it in the material setting switching it to alpha blend and we will remove the shadows. From there, in the shader editor, we will remove the principal BSDF, add an emission shader and a transparent shader and plug them into a mix shader. I will plug the transparent shader in the upper socket and the emission shader in the lower socket. This way, dark values plugged into the factor will be transparent and white values will be emissive. We now need to create the mask for our material. We will start using a texture gradient texture. Make sure that you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. This way, by Ctrl Shift left clicking any node, you will be able to preview its output. We will now change the gradient type to quadratic sphere. And with the gradient texture node selected, I will press Ctrl T. This will automatically add a texture coordinate and a mapping node. We will change the type to texture and for the sake of demonstration, I will offset the X and Y location to 0.5. So we got our horizontal offset, but on the Y axis, the offset behave a bit weirdly. And this is because we were using generated coordinates, why we need to use our UVs. Now the gradient is perfectly centered into our plane. As it is offset by 0.5 on 1 on both the X and Y axis. But we don't want that. We want our gradient to start from the bottom of the plane. So I will set the Y value to 0. Now we will be able to play with the X scale value to make the flame shape thinner or thicker. Let's bring some detail to our shape by adding a texture, noise texture. And I will duplicate it so that we can mix two different noise together to get more details. To mix those texture, I will go to color and add a mix color and plug each factor into the color input. On the second noise, I will change the scale to 10. And on the mix color node, I will change the mode to soft light. To be able to betterly read this newly created texture, I will add a converter color ramp and pushing the black values and the white value to the center will contrast the current result. Whenever I change the factor value here, I'm more or less mixing the second noise on top of the first. So we will set this value to 1 by default and later on we will play with the scale value of the different noise to get the fire shape we want. We can add a very low value of distortion to both our noise texture. It will look more organic. 
Now we need to be able to animate and play with the coordinate of those nodes. Instead of adding two texture coordinate setup like here, we can use only one mapping node and plug it directly into the different noise vector input. Plus, since we are going to use also UV coordinate for this one, I can select the first mapping node and press Ctrl H and do the same on the first texture coordinate. This will collapse the nodes showing only the used sockets and we can source the UV coordinate onto our second mapping node from our first texture coordinates. Now playing with the Y location value of the mapping node, I can make my noise texture sliding vertically onto the plane. So this is something we are going to animate later on. But to make things a little cleaner, I will add a converter combine XYZ and plug it into the location value of the mapping node. It doesn't change anything, but I now can access those location value by playing with this combine XYZ. And we will be able to collapse the mapping node this way. Before we do so, I will duplicate the color ramp so that I can place it in front of the gradient texture node and we can both control the contrast of our noise textures and the gradient texture. Finally, I will add a color mix RGB so that we can mix both our gradient texture and the noise textures. The gradient being our main shape and the noise are the details that we will bring into this flame shape. I will give myself some space into my node editor and I will switch the mapping type of our texture noise to texture so that when we move the location on the Y axis in a positive value, this will move positively on the vertical axis. There will be a lot of tweaking regarding the different values of this shader but we can slightly reduce the X scale of the noise so that it looked a bit more stretched vertically. Now it's time to look at what we can do with the combination of our gradient texture and our noise texture. We will add a converter map range. It behaves a bit like a color ramp, but we can input values instead of color. So it makes it easier to tweak ranges of values. We will use it to drive the factor of our mix shader. And now when I increase the from minimum value, we can see our plane becoming transparent where it's dark. If I now play with the previous mix color between the gradient texture and the noise texture, you can see that I get different shapes. The closer I get to zero on this mix factor, the closer to the gradient shape we get. Then it's a matter of experimenting with the from minimum value and this mix value. I will also slightly decrease the from max value to 0.85. Don't hesitate to play around with the different map range value, the mix value, but also the color ramp until you get the shape you want. Just be subtle when manipulating those values as minor change in the input can create big differences on the output. Let's bring some color to our frame. I will add a color ramp and to demonstrate it, I will plug in the mix color into the factor and the output of the color ramp into the color of the emission shader. I will create a simple gradient from red to yellow, and then I will push the value of the emission shader to five or 10, whatever value you want. Using the mix color, we get a bit blurry result. It's better to use the output from the map range. So I will plug this in and I will modify my color ramp so that I get more contrast. From there, I will play with the scale of my noise texture and with the contrast of the different textures. But we can see we are starting to get a pretty convincing fire shape. And then when I change the Y location value of the noise texture, 
the fire seems to be burning. So we will just have to animate it later on to get to the right result. I'm just now slightly working on the different values from the gradient, the map range and the contrast to get a nice shape. So we now have our base flame. Next, we will bring a bit of distortion and also allow to duplicate those flames and get different results based on the world space position. The idea is to create some turbulences modifying the coordinates of our texture. So I will duplicate the texture coordinates node and press Ctrl H to unhide everything. I will then add a texture noise texture and use the object coordinates. The cool thing about object coordinates is that we can use an actual object to modify them. So in the 3D view, I will press Shift A and add an empty object. Then I will select back my fire plane and I will pin the shader so that we can see it whenever we are selecting any other object. I will select the empty in the object coordinates of the texture coordinates node. Now if I control shift to click the noise to see it and move the empty, we can see the noise texture moving onto the plane. I will slightly reduce the scale of the noise to get a bigger pattern. Now, as shown in my Sword Trail tutorial, our noise texture can be output as a variation of colors and our vector coordinates can also be outputted as colors. The green value is the Y value, the red value is the X value. So if we mix the noise with our current UV coordinates, this will create variation upon our UVs. And so it will generate distortion upon our UV coordinates and our flame pattern. And as I move the MT, we can see this strange effect occurring onto our flame shape. So depending on the mix factor between our noise and our UV coordinates, we will get more or less distortion into the shape. So if we now animate this empty object location and also the location on our combine XYZ node, it will both animate the distortion and also the original noise shape or flame shape of our material. If we want to make a more complex fire or see if there is any variation, we can duplicate our plane. Since those newly duplicated planes are sharing the same shader, they will behave the same way. To animate the empty, I will open the dope sheet. On frame 1, in the 3D view, I will press I and choose location to insert a keyframe, jump to frame 10, move a bit the empty on the Z axis and insert another keyframe. Pressing Ctrl Tab in the dope sheet, I will switch to the graph editor. Once I'm there, I will press A to select all the curves and I want them to have a linear interpolation, so I will press V and switch the handle type to Vector. Then I will press Shift E and choose Linear Extrapolation. This way, when playing the animation, the MT will move on the Z-axis at a constant speed. I can then change the value on frame 10 to accelerate or decelerate the distortion. Now we can repeat the process with the combine XYZ node. We can key the Y value, which is the Y location value of the noise of our flames, set a value of 0 on frame 1 and a random positive value on frame 10, convert the curve to vector and then press Shift E to set a linear extrapolation. Then we can play the animation and modify the value on frame 10 to accelerate or decelerate the flames. And here our flame shader is done. From there, if you want, you can duplicate the shader and modify the contrast or the scale of the flame to create smaller flames, for example, 
and create a better fire composition. Here are a couple of additional effects you can add to improve the effect. We will deform the plane as we play the animation. So I will add a subdivision modifier, set it to simple deform and you can crank up the subdivision level to 6. Then if you want to allow a bit of parallax onto your fire, you can add a simple deform and set it to bend. Use the Z axis and slightly increase the angle so that your plane will kind of be projected onto a cylinder shape. From there, I will select all the other flame planes and press Ctrl L and choose modifier so that they will source the modifiers we've just set up. Now our fire will look a bit more 3D. The last step is to add a displacement modifier. Once the modifier is set, we need to create a displacement texture. I will go to the texture tab and choose a cloud texture and I will increase its size so that I get a nice waviness upon my fire shape. Back onto the displacement modifier, I can use the coordinates of an object to currently manipulate the coordinates of this cloud texture. So I can simply source the empty we have already animated so that the cloud texture will slide upon my fire shape and displace it. I will again press Ctrl L and source the modifier so that all my flames get this displacement modifier. The final step is to get the right size and right rhythm into the displacement. And I've made a last iteration of the shader by duplicating one of the plane and duplicating the material. And I've favorized the noise so that I can create small sparkles in the background. This is a super versatile shader we have created on material and you can use different shapes, different patterns to create water effect, smoke effect, etc. Next time we will create smoke clouds. This is the end of this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe.